Dean Chang joins us as an East Asian expert at the Heritage Foundation. So, Dean, what could a third handshake, do you think, really accomplish, or is it just uh, another uh, action for show? Well, I think that one of the key takeaways from Hanoi, where President Trump walked out of the meeting, is that if there isn't some substance, he's not going to just basically agree to something in order to score points or uh, burnish his image. Well, so what I substance think could there be? I mean, when if he says he's going to just go to the DMZ and shake Kim Jong-un's hand? Well, at this point, um, the real question is going to be whether the North Koreans will make any kind of meaningful commitment towards denuclearization. Frankly, I'm not optimistic about that. Um, but it is, if, uh, if Kim Jong-un actually shows up, it does mean that he presumably is going to put something on the table. Because I think it was pretty embarrassing for him for Trump to just walk out because the North Koreans put nothing on the table. What do you think that something could be? Um, he might be willing to offer up one or two nuclear warheads. That has always been one of the possibilities. Uh, he might be willing to put something other than Yongbyon on the table in terms of shutting down parts of the North Korean nuclear uh, infrastructure. Um, on the flip side, he's certainly going to demand once again that we, the U.S., uh, end some of our sanctions regime on the North Koreans. Uh, this is this is going to be a really tough call. It could just be a photo opportunity. Now, uh, previous presidents have visited after the presidency, President Carter and President Clinton. So what to you is the significance if the current president of the United States actually steps over that border, sets foot in North Korea, uh, a nation uh, in which we gave treasure and blood during the Korean conflict, and a nation in which we are still technically uh, at war? Well, President Trump has already broken precedent simply by meeting Kim Jong-un, which no uh, sitting U.S. president had done. So stepping across the border um, would actually be consistent with the meeting between Kim and President Moon of South Korea, where, again, Kim actually took Moon by the hand and took him over the border uh, one or two steps into the DMZ. Although there's, would, a, you know, the difference between the South Korean president doing that and the American president, obviously. Oh, of course. But what it would also do is it would make very clear that the U.S. and South Korea, interestingly, are both basically making inroads into um, trying to normalize relations. But at the same time, the talks with Stephen Began, I mean, they, they've basically been frozen. It's a stalemate. North Korea has not declared anything, not let international inspectors in, not really dismantled anything of significant, and he has not really taken one step to try and move toward denuclearization. No, that's exactly right. This is the problem. So you have a lot of public image, you have a lot of smiling faces, a lot of handshakes, a lot of summit meetings, great photo opportunities, but the real substance of denuclearization hasn't moved. Um, what is Kim getting out of this? He's getting some nice photo opportunities, a chance to, you know, be photographed with the president of the United States, the most important person out there. But at the end of the day, North Korea's economy continues to limp along in the face of American sanctions. Yeah, limping along with a lot of the sanctions, we're told, being broken by uh, North Korea. Uh, we uh, seized one of their ships, and there are now uh, proposals on Capitol Hill to get even tougher. So are the president is saying he may go to the DMZ to shake Kim Jong-un's hand. You've got uh, members of the Senate, bipartisan members, trying to slap more sanctions on North Korea. There is the Otto Warmbier Brink Act, named, of course, after Otto, the 22-year-old uh, young man from uh, 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 this, what, the what, University of Virginia, who was so savagely beaten and basically killed by Kim Jong-un's thugs. And the Otto Warmbier Brink Act is a banking act sponsored by Senators Republican Tat Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania and Chris Van Holland of Maryland, a bipartisan effort to clamp down on banks that do financial business with North Korea to hit Kim Jong-un in the wallet. Here's what the Senator to uh, Toomey told me uh, uh, recently. We're going to make those Chinese banks decide, do you want to have access to the U.S. dollar banking system globally, or do you want to keep doing business with North Korea? I want them to have to choose. I'm pretty sure I know what choice they'll make, and that is designed to increase the economic pressure on Kim. So the goal is for these banks and financial institutions to either do business with Kim or with the United States, not both. That's right. That's right. So finally, is an outreach more important or actually clamping down on something that Kim Jong-un would really feel? I think the clampdown has to occur if we're going to make that impression on Kim. But there's nothing that keeps you from smiling 
uh, were being polite uh, as you apply those sanctions. Speak softly and carry a, a big stick, is what Theodore Roosevelt called it. Dean Chang, uh, thank you so much uh, from the uh, Heritage Foundation.